My guest is Kathleen Gage, who has her own speaking and consulting business, and she also ran her first full marathon at the age of 60. She got a certificate of completion for plant-based nutrition from E. Cornell University at 64, and she's looking for her next personal challenge as she approaches 67. So I am going to ask you, Kathleen, uh, what do you see coming for older women in the coming year? Oh, my gosh. You know, there's so much opportunity uh, personally and professionally. I think personally, more and more women are taking control of their health, especially in light of what's going on with COVID. And we can't go to the gym like we used to. So um, I, I think it really is a matter of uh, women are choosing to live a healthier life. And it's through the exercise, through the eating, through the making sure that they're hydrated, things of that nature. Also mindset. Uh, I have a morning process I do that starts with yoga. And I just go on YouTube. I, I have a favorite. Her name is Jen Hillman on, on YouTube. I do about 20 to 30 minutes of yoga. Then I do some uh, really good reading, spiritual reading. I do some journaling and I have my meditation time. So that's my quiet time to get myself prepared for the day. And I think that more and more women are realizing that they do have control over that. Another thing that I'm seeing, Dr. Carson, is that there's more opportunity for older women in the workforce, uh, whether they're working for a company or they're starting their own businesses. Uh, I just recently signed in a uh, contract with a company that is a plant-based vegan placement agency. They're a virtual placement agency for people who are looking for jobs within organizations that have a mission-driven statement. And the owner of the company, she's definitely over 50. Um, I'm definitely over 50. And I'm seeing a lot of women my age and older that are looking for new opportunities in their career. Because truth be told, the last year uh, decimated many businesses. I know that as a professional speaker, I used to go on the platform and I'd get paid really good money to go on the platform, as you know yourself being a speaker that, you know, it's not, it's not chump, uh, chump change. It's a, a good amount of money. Well, that side of a lot of our businesses literally fell off the face of the earth. So we had to reinvent ourselves. And I think that many women, as we get older, we're realizing that we can either pull the covers over our head, cry about what happened. And we might do that for a little while, but then pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off and then say, okay, what's the next opportunity? What can I create in my life? So I think personally, it's about health and, and fitness. And I think professionally, it's looking at what's going to give us significance in what we're putting into um, our life and the lives of others. I'm glad to hear you say that, Kathleen, because first of all, um, there are so many women who uh, believe that when they are downsized or let go because of the pandemic, because they've been shrinking workforces, that um, their professional career is over. There's nowhere for them to go. The other point is once you have worked in a corporation, which I have to confess I never did, uh, I mean, I was in business at 21, so I didn't work for anybody. Uh, they're not used to doing everything themselves. I mean, they have a staff and you don't have a staff when you start off your own business. You're a cheap cook and bottle washer. Right. So uh, I, but my feeling is that there are so many places that and I always talk about reinvention. There are so many places where you can reinvent yourself and where you can be a source of, of great uh, gratitude and benefit for others. And even if you don't need to work, if your income is okay and it's a volunteering kind of thing, or you start your own foundation, or you do whatever it is, uh, there is a place for you. And it's interesting because I was talking about in my mastermind group, uh, the, the leader said, and what was your day like today, Gail? Because she kind of was going through everybody. And I said, well, you know, I first I went to the radiologist and from the radiologist, I went to the oncologist and from the oncologist and I came home and then I did some, you know, things blah, 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 and now I'm on with you. And this was like our mastermind is from six to eight at night. And so she said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. She said, do you realize there are women in their 60s who are listening to uh, to you or listening to your message and they don't get off the couch? 
and here you are almost 83 and you are going through and you're going through everything you're going through and you're still doing everything you do. And I said, well, yeah, cause that's who I am. Right. And my, my son always says to me, mom, you've worked 61 years. Isn't it time for you to stop? And I said, but what would I do? I mean, I'm doing everything I want to do anyway. And uh, except that I can't go, you know, back and forth to California because for 18 years I went California, Florida, California, Florida, because I had homes out there, which I sold because I knew I wasn't getting back there and I didn't want to rent. So um, he said, but I know you wouldn't be the person that you are or as sharp as you are if you weren't doing it. That is the whole point. So um, one of the things I know that you say is that you see a great benefit for women choosing to change their eating. What kind of reaction as a coach have you seen to that philosophy? Well, you know, it's so interesting because I think more than anything, Dr. Carson, what we we can be is an example of what's possible rather than saying, OK, you need to do X, Y and Z. When people come to us and they pay us to to coach them, that's one scenario when people are um, they're They're watching us and they're really seeing are they are they the person they claim to be? And so I think Oftentimes, and this is a saying in recovery, they say attraction rather than promotion, which means when you get sober, you attract people to that lifestyle if it's appropriate for them rather than forcing it on them. And I know that a lot of people, when they first get sober, they think the whole world should get sober. I was that way. And then I realized, wait a minute, they're social drinkers. They don't have a problem like I do. So I don't need to, I don't need to force my, my perspective on them. And it's the same with being a plant-based eater, being a very active woman. It's, I have people that come to me and they say, tell me what you do. And inevitably the first thing that I hear is, oh, I could never do that. And I said, well, maybe you can't. It's, I said, it's really up to you. You ask me what I'm doing. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing, whether you want to do it or not is up to you. So I think a lot of it has to do with what is the example that we're setting. And, you know, as, as you were sharing, uh, a little while ago, I was thinking about who I can't think of the name of the person who said the five people we surround ourselves with, we become the average of those five people, which is I think so that true. Was Jim Rohn. I think that was yeah, Jim. you're okay. You are correct. It is Jim Rohn. And you think about it. If we hang out with people who just sit around and, and complain about life and they they're sitting on the couch, eating their bonbons and watching soap operas, that's probably what we're going to do. But if we're hanging out with people who have uh, aspirations in life and they're, they're active and they're, uh, they have a great mindset. We tend to be like that. And I, you know, with the, the changes in careers, I was talking with a friend of mine, we've known each other probably 15 or 20 years and she's in the online space and I've been in the online space for years. And she said, you know, it's so interesting because with the, the pandemic, what it forced me to do was to take inventory of my skill set and say, what can I bring to the experience for the next opportunity that presents itself and the next opportunity I create? Well, what's so interesting is she's now consulting with corporations and she used to consult with entrepreneurs only. And she's taking that experience into the corporate environment and teaching team building, communication skills, leadership. And she goes, I never in my wildest dreams thought I would go back back into a corporate environment. And she goes, I'm loving it because I'm bringing a fresh perspective to the experience. That's terrific. And I went just the opposite way. I was providing leadership and team building and customer service to corporations and associations and felt like they weren't listening. So decided after 20 some years to get out of it and go work with women and also the media. So it's interesting how, um, as we, you know, we metamorphose and, uh, uh, you know, we do reinvent that. I always say, I think I've reinvented myself seven or eight times that uh, we, we just become more aware. It's called experience. It's called life. It's called, you know, all of the things that we have input into our lives and so forth. So what what is the legacy that you want to leave behind, Kathleen? I mean, you've got such a rich background. What What is it that you want to leave? Wow, you're you're asking such great questions. And I would say that the legacy I want to leave behind is that I was kind. I, I think, you know, above and beyond anything else that I was just a kind person. And I really 
look to create those types of opportunities wherever I go. For example, if I go to the grocery store, I know that the clerks are getting beat up right now. I know that. They're, people are harsh. People are are uh, vicious, if you will. And, and it seems like there's a lot of that going on in the world. And if I can say one kind word to that, that clerk that makes a difference in their day, then I'm going to. And I always look at their name tag and I call them by name and I say, how are you today? It's a busy day, boy. I just appreciate what you're doing. And they light up. So for me, the legacy I want to leave behind is kindness, kindness to the animals, kindness to people, kindness. You know, when I when I uh, had the, I, I call it an opportunity to be there with my mother uh, during her final years. I was her one of her primary caretakers, and I really had the opportunity to learn what love was in a whole different way, to be there fully of service to my mother, and it had nothing to do with what I was going to get in return. It was just, this is my mother. I'm her baby. Uh, what she gave to me as a child, I can give to her as she has her final years and as she transitions. And I, I have to say that to me, that was one of the most, um, loving and kind experiences I've ever had because my mother on her deathbed literally said, I'm so proud of the woman you've become and I love you so much. And those words have stuck with me. And I have to say it's been nine years and I still feel that pain of losing my mother. And I, I just encourage people that the people that are in your life, Make sure that you're complete in each day because you never know when the last day will be. So make sure that every day you're in uh, resolution with everything you need to be. You know, that's so interesting that you say that, Kathleen, because um, with everything that you've done and everything I know you want to do, to say that the legacy you want to leave is being kind. And I don't want to make any comparisons, <laughs> but... I wonder how many men would say that. If you ask a man what his legacy, what he wants his legacy to be, I don't think too many of them would say being kind or caring about others. I mean, there are some that will and that do, but I think it's a whole different mindset with a woman. And that's why uh, when, when you know people say, well, you should be more like a man, I know for years that my energy, and it's still a bigger part of me, is a male energy. It's not mm -hmm. a female energy. Mm -hmm. uh, I've grown with a more female energy, believe it or not, because of my son, because he's very spiritual and he has kind of dragged me kicking and screaming uh, into the spiritual world. And so, uh, although I'm not what he is or practice what he does, I'm certainly more aware and don't poo poo it. But I, I have to say, I think the way men and women look at a legacy is just different. Absolutely. And I'm curious, what is your son's spiritual practice? Because I actually have a spiritual practice that every morning I have to get my mind in the right place and give thanks. And this morning I did this, this gratitude list and it was like, thank you God for all the blessings in my life. Thank you for the people in my life. Thank you for the, my health. Thank you for my eyes. Thank you. You know, just real, uh, just a simple process of gratitude. But I I'm curious what your son's uh, spiritual practice is. Well, I don't know everything he does. I know he has a spiritual coach who he talks to every week. Nice. I know that he celebrates everything. I mean, Whatever it is, if it's a anniversary or it's a particular success of some sort, he celebrates everything. He doesn't just move on to the next thing, but he's very practical. I mean, he's very good. He's very analytical. And yet, uh, and he believes in like the third eye and, and uh, all the chakras and things like that. And uh, he's always talking about when Mercury is moving and <laughs> all the planets are doing their thing. So it's just, um, and it's very interesting because on the one hand, he's a very sharp financial guy and very analytical. I sent him to law school and he never practiced law because he said, I don't want to work that hard. And he doesn't, but he, um, but it taught him how to think. And that, that was the most important thing. 
Uh, but he also, and I tell him, you are not the child you were at 16, which I couldn't right. stand. You know, now you're just the most loving son. For example, Kathleen, I told you I sold my homes out in California, and he's desperately trying to get me back out there. And he said, when you make the decision, we'll find a place for you in San Diego, and we'll get you settled. And he's always looking at places for me there. And he says, and if you want to come to Rancho Mirage, because I had homes in Palm Springs and Rancho Mirage, he said, if you want to come to Rancho Mirage, you'll stay with us. Uh, whether you want to stay two weeks or nine months, whatever it is, you've got your own little suite. Uh, you can do whatever you want, come and go. It's fine with us. And if you decide you want to stay in Miami, we'll get a three bedroom apartment. That way you have one room for your office, one room for you and one room for us. So, uh, cause I'm in a two bedroom right now. So where do you find a kid like that? You know, and I, don't know, uh, but I want to meet your son. He sounds like a great guy as a friend. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, I'm in a 31 year relationship, so it would definitely be, but I like people like that. I like people who are so they're kind, you know, and, and I think right now, Dr. Carson, that the world needs kinder people because there's so much, um, I, I, I learned years ago that fear is the flip side of anger. So with all the anger going on right now, it's because people are moving in a lot of fear. And if we can do anything to minimize that fear in their life, um, we're doing a good thing. Yeah, it is so important uh, to be able to, you know, look at all of this. And, and I will say that, um, you know, I, I do think, for example, uh, he'll send money to my daughter or my granddaughter you know, for holidays or various times of things, and they think that they they uh, need some extra help, you know, and because uh, my granddaughter's going through a divorce and my daughter lives on Social Security, and so he does, you know, various things, or like I, I uh, invited someone to, in my building, she's always been very good to me, so Thanksgiving, I said, let's, uh, you know, do Thanksgiving dinner together, um, and, you know, on opposite sides of the table, et cetera, and um, we did that and we did, um, did we do Christmas together? I think we did one other holiday together. I don't remember what. Anyway, he said, well, how much was it? And I told him and he sent me money, you know, so I didn't ask for it, you know, I mean, but it was just such a, a, a nice thing. So I think that, that um, women need to give themselves credit for everything they've done for raising a family, for surviving, you know, maybe discrimination at some point or another, um, and also the victories that they've had. I have to admit, I am a non-drinker. I used to drink, not a lot. I mean, I was never a heavy drinker, but I never really enjoyed it. And so, I mean, the biggest thing I got was a pina colada. And so, um, you know, that, that's my level of drinking is a pina colada or a frozen daiquiri. So, um, so now I don't drink at all. And, um, Sometimes um, the only thing I will drink is uh, white Zinfandel. And if you go to a really nice restaurant and uh, my son will always order a martini or something, I, he'll, I'll say, well, do you have any white Zinfandel? They look at me like it's sacrilegious because it's such a non uh, nice drink. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, if I'm gonna drink anything, I have one glass of white Zinfandel. That's my, that's my tolerance level. So, you know, when you think about where you're going, Kathleen, what is it you want to do yet? I know it's finish your memoir. Right. Um, what are some of the parting thoughts that you have? Oh my gosh. Um, you know, I just, I just hope that every day I make the best day possible and I really stay in a state of gratitude because it, it's so easy to get sucked up into uh, what's going on in the world right now. And I, I'm really hopeful of the next, uh, what the next administration is going to do, or our current administration, I should say. And to really work on, I love the, the term you used earlier about social justice, because I think there's so much that many of us can do if we're willing to just step up to the plate. And so for me, I just pray on a daily basis, you know, guide me that I do what I'm being called to do and that I, I notice what I'm being called to do because many times we have opportunities put in our life and we devalue those opportunities. And it's, it's so interesting because when I went plant-based, uh, a few years ago, I didn't 
ever in my wildest dreams think that it would be a part of my business model. And it was about a year ago, I was speaking at a podcast conference. And it was at that conference that I thought, you know, I should start a podcast for plant based eating. So it was just a thought and I came back and I have my team that uh, I've got a team of virtual assistants with an online business manager. I said, Okay, here's my idea. Let's go ahead and put this in place. Did my first episode? Well, nearly a year later, I'm still going strong with my show. And it's created so many amazing, amazing, amazing opportunities to meet influencers within that industry and also men and women who have literally turned their lives around. Well, that opened up an opportunity to work with this placement agency. And I just started that uh, contract about not even a week ago. Uh, and there's so many opportunities being opened up to me within that wow. industry and never in my wildest dreams did I plan for it to be that way. So what I know to be true is that life will present us with opportunities all the time and it's up to us what we do with those opportunities. Do we say yes or do we shy away from it and say, oh, I couldn't possibly because I'm too old. I'm too, uh, I'm not smart enough. I'm not rich enough. I'm too rich. I'm whatever it may be, whatever excuse we come up with instead of having excuses give reasons why we must do what we're here to do yeah it's all life is all about choices absolutely so we're almost at the end kathleen i want people to know how to get a hold of you i don't know if you have a gift for anybody but what is the best way to reach kathleen well, thank you for asking. Uh, they can reach me at one of two uh, websites. One is powerupforprofits.com. That's powerupforprofits, plural, dot com. And that's my business site. And then plantbasedeatingforhealth.com, plantbasedeatingforhealth.com. Dot com. They'll find all the information. I've got a free gift on both websites. So I would invite them to go there. One is a podcast checklist and the other one is the beginner's guide to plant-based eating. Uh, it chronicles my journey in the first few months of me going plant-based. Wow. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. So um, what is one thing that you would offer to our listeners that you think will get them off the couch and moving? <laughs> wow. I would say the one thing is that we, we hear this so often that this is not a dress rehearsal. This is the real deal and realize that your life is what you make it and you can find excuses. I know, you know, with, with a, a marriage that I had in my early twenties, it was an abusive relationship. When I got divorced, I was left with literally nothing. And that's when I started drinking really heavy and I blamed everything on my ex-husband. And until I was willing to take responsibility for my part in the, the situation, whatever that part may have been, in, and I was willing to forgive my life couldn't work. And so I would say really look at today as an opportunity to take that one baby step towards the life that you know you deserve. And it is about deserving and it is about giving back and it's about living fully. Fantastic. Well, folks, you've heard where Kat, you can reach Kathleen and you can reach me at spunkyoldbroad.com. I've got my newsletter there that I'd love for you to just subscribe to. Uh, I have my university there where all my online courses are that are self-study. I have um, the uh, Facebook group, the SOB Virtual Club, which you can certainly join. It's free. I would love to have you there. So if you go to groups and SOB Virtual Club, uh, it's there. And I also have my store where you can uh, buy my coffee cups and have uh, coffee or tea with me every morning and uh, merchandise. I have t-shirts and leggings and all kinds of wonderful things like that. So Hopefully you will you will uh, head over there and uh, take advantage of that as well. And uh, you know, Kathleen, this has really been a wonderful conversation today. It uh, I hope inspires all the people who are in that over 50 age group to know that whatever it is you choose, whether it's volunteering or going into business or going back to a, a, a corporation or a small business or Whatever it is, maybe, uh, you know, maybe you want to be a dog walker. I mean, if you love animals the way uh, Kathleen and I do, dog walking might be just the thing for you because uh, you get out, you walk, and you've got your animal there, and uh, people pay a lot of money for that. So it's a really good business. So uh, hopefully all of this has been important to you. Thank you so much for being with us today, Kathleen. It's been a wonderful, wonderful day, and uh, I wish you only the best in the future. Thank you, Dr. Carson. It's been delightful.